One thing you notice about watching Eyes Without a Face for the first time is the explicit nature of the operations. It would never been done on such a scale. Even by today's standards, it's pretty gruesome. When the film played at the Edinburgh Film Festival, the director Fanju was told about three or four people passing out, and he replied, well, now I know why Scotsmen wear skirts. Pourquoi mens-tu? Depuis le temps que je te connais, je lis sur ton visage. Dis-moi la vérité. Censorship was still very rife in France in the 1950s, so when the producer Jules Broken decided to make the film, he gave stipulations to the director. One, the scientist cannot be mad. Two, there cannot be too much blood. And three, unlike the novel, no animals can be harmed in the film. Maurice Jarre's score for the film is way ahead of its time. He loved working with orchestras, so every piece of music he's ever done is with a full orchestra. Six years later, after Eyes Without a Face, he went on to win Academy Awards for Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> Edith Scobb would spend three hours each morning in the makeup chair having the mask applied. When it came to lunchtime and she struggled to eat, they would feed her through a straw. This lasted around six or seven months. The mask has so much homage nowadays that you've seen it in Tim Burton's Batman and also in Holy Motors where Scob plays a character of herself and continues to wear the mask as well. Fanju surrounded himself with a great crew for this film. His cinematographer was Eugene Shufton, who went on to win an Oscar for his work on The Hustler just a few years later. He worked closely with the author Jean Redon as well, then enlisted screenwriters Pierre Boulet and Thomas Najak after they had worked on Les Daleks and Hitchcock's Vertigo. In 1962, Eyes Without a Face was rebranded for the US audience called The Chamber of Dr. Faust. It was also cut. Surprisingly, one of the cut scenes was actually showing the doctor being very kind to a child.